arms forward, bum back. And inhale, climb up onto your hands and knees. And exhale, push your bottom back. Inhale, hands and knees. Level one. Always comfortable, always inclusive. Hopefully everyone can do this. Hands under shoulders. Spread your fingers, hip over knee, tummy muscle tight. And here's how we'll add to that. Climb up onto your hands and knees and lift one knee. And then bring the knee, almost hug the other knee, so you're crossing over. Now lift, land and bum back. Inhale, climb up, lift the other knee. Hook the knee as if it's crossing over the knee. Lift it and then bum back. Easy as that, level two. Put the weight into your arms. Keep your arms really strong. Spread your fingers. Bum back. Inhale, climb up. Lift the other leg, cross over. Lift and land. So keep going, just one on each side, knee lift, and look for your alignment as always. So you don't want to arch the back, my little ballet dancers, I want you to stabilize your back by drawing your deep abdominal in. So it's not a big archy move with bent elbows, it's a power move where your balance and your core is strong, okay? Well done. So this is your practice move. We can do one last one. Excellent. And push your bottom back, let the breath go. Inhale to climb up. Exhale to cross. And rest back down. So give yourself a moment, accomplish that, big success. Level one was just up and down. Level two was the knee cross. Level three, da, da, da. lift your knees so you're in a full press up position. Lift your leg, squeeze your thighs together, release. I'm going to do the other side whilst I'm here, might as well. Squeeze both feet down, bend the knees, bum to heels, let go. Inhale, hands and knees, level one. Level two, lift the knee and cross it. Level three, onto your toes and squeeze your thighs together. So I'm not lifting my legs very high. I don't need to. It's not about my legs. It's about losing a support. <laughs> Curl the toes. So you just squeeze the legs together and the other side. Good, and you feel how much harder your arms have to work, your shoulders, your core, and your thighs. So there's a lot of muscles involved here, which is why it's a full body exercise. And arguably, makes it easier. Jury's out. Why? Well, because you've got more muscles working on your behalf. You're not just isolating one. Hmm? Does that logic make sense? Release your hands, release your back, have more water, it's getting warmer, and then we will lie down on our tummy. But lie down on your tummy with your elbows propping you up. Clasp your hands so your nose is over your thumbs, and pull your tummy muscles in, and then let your tummy drop. Level one. Scoop your tummy and let your tummy release. Scoop your tummy and let it release. Good work. Scoop. So have a connection with the floor, with your bones, like your hips and your pubic bone. And isolate the deep abdominal. Scoop the belly. Got that? Now do the same thing on your knees. So you want a flat back or a... I should rephrase that, a neutral back and then lower to the floor. So a neutral back, a shoulder blades flattening to your spine, flattening to your back, 
not rigid, and a lower back that feels comfortable and lower. So you have a natural curve, not an arch. An arch would look like this. I'm trying to arch as much as I can. A neutral curve would be natural like that. So keep going up onto your elbows, your forearms. Keep your nose over your thumbs. Well done. And here's your little spice, your level three. So get myself ready, prepped. Lift one knee, cross the knee. <gasps> Do the other side, might as well. Cross the knee and then land. Whoa. Let's do it again. Elbows, lift and cross, knee lowers, lift and cross, knee lowers, relax. Three more, three more together, come on. Choose your level. It could be you just tighten the tummy. It could be that you come up onto your knees or that final level where we cross the knees. Let's go, two more. Well done, love your determination, cross. And the other side, cross and release. One last one. Feel that power. Work with your breath. Find your recovery. Hands under forehead, heels to bum, and move both feet in unison, side to side. That might not be enough. You might need more stretch. Pop into the pose of a child. Do the stretch that works best for you. So whilst we're here, whilst we have this little interlude, I'm going to stretch your quads again. <laughs> let one foot land and let that hand come forward for support. Fingertips on the floor. Take the other hand either to your very expensive leggings, <laughs> or if you can, your ankle. So not your toes, because that's gonna to put too much pressure on the ankle. Go, sorry, to the knee, go for the ankle. And I can feel the stretch immediately. Hip bones on the floor, knee on the floor, stay here. Or the option is to do this, nearly fell over, on your side with your knee in line with your hips, so not high, keep it low and push behind. If you're lying with your tummy, your next stage is to lift the thigh. Spend some quality time here. <laughs> Use your fingers on the floor, lift your thigh and push your hip into the floor and stay there. Good, it's worth it, it's worth it, stay with me. Good, we'll do that on the other side. So, other arm goes forward, find your leggings or your ankle. Or turn onto your side and line the knee up with the hip. Once you've been on the floor for a minute or two, or seconds or two, start to lift the thigh. I would suggest it's quite hard to do straight away. Give yourself a few moments. And if you are flexible or just like the challenge flex your feet lift both thighs and pull your shoulders back again arguably slightly easier i don't know the theory being that you're using more muscles now to get you into posture you need the counter pose and the counter pose is normally this the pose of a child Move slowly into a restorative counter pose, taking your spine the other way. Good. Well done. So I'm just going to release my back a few more times in the cat stretch and the dog tilt. And then we're going to do some back work. I don't normally do a lot of back work normally integrate it into everything we do, but we're going to focus purely on the back. So we're going to lie on our tummy, towel underneath your forehead, and take your arms forward. So you're like a big, strong I, capital I. Your thumbs are up, and your little finger is on the floor. 
and it's really important that your fingers are in line with shoulder. Bring your towel underneath your forehead. I can't do it because I'm presenting, speaking. But keep your head on the forehead, forehead on the towel and lift one or both arms. Five. One or both arms. Four. Or derivatives of. One or both arms. If that's too much, bend the elbows. Make the lever shorter. You understand the principles of Pilates. The longer the lever, the more intensity the work. Okay, next level. Tighten your tummy, arms and chest. Lower back and upper back. Thumbs lead the way. Little fingers land. Breathe out. Breathe in. Good. Take a moment. Both heels to bum. Restore your lower back's movement. And now take the hands into a Y shape. So that was the I, straight in line. And now a Y, little finger on the side, out in a, a V shape or a Y shape, your thumbs up. Keep your head on your towel, lift the arms, breathe out. One. Feet on the floor. Two. Make this a back work. Three. Four. It's harder than it looks, isn't it? We're in it together. Five. Now chest and arms. With me. Lift. One. Breathe out. Two. Breathe out. Three. Four. And five. Recover. Small incremental moves to make us stronger. Well done. Third and final one. Hands out to the side. Again, little finger down, thumb up. Head on your towel. And lift just your arms. One. Just your arms. Two. Three, feel the difference, cross your back. Four. And five, now lift your chest. Lift, one. Breathe out, two. I enjoy this one, this one's good for me, I like this. It's easy for me. That's perfect, well done everyone. So find your recovery, heels to bum, and release. I've got one last move. I know I told you that was it. I have reservations about it because I don't want to put any strain on your neck. So it looks like this as a level one, shoulders roll, chest lift. But if you're looking for a little bit more, you could bring your hands with the lightest, the lightest of touch with your fingertips on the back of your head. Now this is going to work all the way down your spine. It's that encouragement of the chest to open and it's the squeeze in the upper back where so many of us have lost strength. So if you can do five of those with the lightest of touches, the lightest of touches on your upper back of your head. Maybe give the shoulder blades a squeeze. Neck strengthening, back strengthening, chest opening, and I've had enough. <laughs> Find your restorative pose. The pose of a child is my favorite. Take a seat and wrap up, oh, oh, warm back. Take a seat with your hands down your legs. So here's another counter pose, the easier. Maybe your hands can go under your knees. And then when you've finished resting, you want to carry on exercising, tuck your tailbone under and allow your lower back to come down towards the floor and then lift. Roll back and lift. That's it, gentle, flowing. Back to our level one. 
level two, straight arms. Fingers out in line, fingers in line with shoulders, gripping. I am gripping, there's no other word for it, I am gripping my deep abdominal. I'm holding my deep abdominal as I roll back. <laughs> and then you're level three. Oh, she's moving quickly. I know. Drop the hand, drop the hand, flow back, lift the arm, drop the hand, climb up, other side, drop the hand, look behind you, drop the hand, climb up. Drop your hand because it puts the shoulder in a safe posture. I see so many clients that hook their shoulder up to open. So that's why I ask you to brush, brush the floor. Five more. I'm tempted to lift my legs, but I think the backlash might be too strong. <laughs> you can do it as, do you remember the level we call just for fun? Once you've done your five of those, feel accomplished, well done. Superb, everything looking strong and happy. We could try the just for fun level. And the just for fun level looks like this. Shins parallel, arm drop. Look behind you and come forward. Do I look stylish? <laughs> oh my word, yes, I managed it. How about one more? Am I pushing my luck? Oh, that's tough on so many levels. And release. <laughs> hands down your legs. And the counter move, hands behind you. Oh, fingers facing away. Shift your position, bum cheek to bum cheek. And forward. Oh, so it's the equivalent of the cat stretch and the dog tilt, but it's a seated option. Good. So come and face forward. Use your towel to sit comfortably. Maybe you put your towel underneath your bottom or give yourself a little bit of height. I practice sitting cross-legged all the time, so it's comfortable for me. It might not be comfortable for you, and I'm so aware of that when I see people trying to sit cross-legged. So work in a way that works for you. A little yoga tr trick is sometimes they'll put bolus, uh, something underneath the knees, bolsters, that's it. But sit comfortably, because I don't want your legs to be involved with this. Bring your hands across your chest as if you're giving yourself a hug. I also recently, one of my lovely coaching clients told me to do this, just cross your thumbs like that and hold these across your heart. It's such a protective internal connection. And then rotate side to side. Good. So what we're doing is we're increasing the flexibility of your mid back. The thoracic spine, your rib cage, a vital range of movement that we want to maintain. Close your eyes so you can be fully absorbed in what you're doing and use your breath, your external, your breath out to rotate and your internal, your inhale to lengthen. Exhale, rotate, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, turn, inhale, lengthen. So your legs want to be comfortable. They can be out in front of you, to the side. You can have cushions under your knees, underneath your bum, because the focus is not on your legs. It's on your mid spine. And if this is good, the lightest of touches, the lightest fingers behind your head, 
just gently touching the back of your head. So no interlocking fingers, no pulling, lightest of touch. Use the length of your spine and turn and keep that going. Good, it's a good, excellent range of movement, a great quality of move. And the more we do, the more the body responds. So we incrementally improve our flexibility and our strength. I love this way of working. Good. Open your arms. Now bring your feet forward or if you're looking for a challenge, bring your knees to the side or the feet to the side. Hand lowers and move away. I'm going to bring my elbow to the floor and stretch or push your bum away. And then lift and the challenging move is to bring your hands to your leg and go over, arm over ear. Breathe in and over you go. Breathe in and over you go. So we haven't done any real traditional Pilates moves. We haven't lay on our back at all for this session, but so good to mix and match. So let's work with the legs the other side, see how that works for you. Either forward or to the other side. So I've got my knee with my heel. Move away, first of all. Oh, wildlife, <laughs> pigeon and then over your feet. So it's the similar, if we can keep the variety going in our classes, we can do something a little bit different each week. It means the body's constantly challenged, the mind's constantly challenged, and that's variety. If you do the same thing week in, week out, I know you've got your favorites, but if you do the same thing week in, week out, it's repetitive and it's also a strain because you're doing the same muscle movement. So a little variety. Good. So find a quiet spot with me <laughs> and breathe in through your nose and release out of your mouth. Breathe in. I always enjoy being with you, teaching you, hosting, that's a better word hosting and being in your company. Thank you so much for joining me.